What's happening, guys? Your boy, AD Clutch, and we back at it again with another Clutch Time interview. And today, I got me my boy, MTV Murphy, one of the hottest DJs out in New Jersey right now. What's up? How you doing today, bro? I'm doing good, brother. How we doing? Doing lit, bro. Uh, so let's just jump right into these interviews questions. Uh, first question is, bro, how you getting into DJing? Um, I'm not going to lie. There's actually an app. I mean, uh, some people might know this app. It's like a little DJ app. And um, I would mess around on there with the auto mix. I didn't actually like mix the music myself. And I bought a bunch of like mixes on SoundCloud, and uh, one of my mixes got like 10k plays. And you know, like I have, I've never DJed. This is back maybe four or five years ago. Um, and then um, basically I just started from there. You know, I would uh, use my friends' mixes or mixers, and I just you know started off like that. Yeah, what was the uh, the song like blew up? I got 10k. Oh, it was like a summer mix that I made with like um just like. We call it like white girl music, you know, yeah. like I kind of pop and like all those different artists, you know, EDM style remixes. Yeah, that, that'll always blow up. Yeah, um, exactly. Yeah. How long you been DJing for? Um, like four years, four or five years now. Yeah, that's lit, man. And uh, who inspired you to DJ? Um, there's like an underground DJ named Mala. He's from, um, I think he's from Germany actually, and he wears like a mask. He wears a ski mask, so no one's seen his face, no one knows who he is, and that um. I was just like pip up uh, is like clips would pop up on my Instagram and I remember just watching this dude and I'm like, you know, he's out in like Germany and Europe with a hundred thousand people in a crowd just and no one even knows who he is and he's just making this crazy music and playing these crazy drops and everybody's, you know, going crazy and getting yeah. lit. So that's I know I started watching him and that's what got me started. You ever think about doing a mask? You know, a little custom mask so people don't know you. I think it would be you dope. See all, you see, like, Daft Punk and all yeah, those guys. A bunch of, yeah, there's a bunch of uh, big DJs that do that. I mean, it's kind of too late now in my career for that, yeah. you could say. I mean, unless I wanted to start over again, but, yeah, I mean, I like when people see my face, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and when you get into DJing, going out different places, events, venues, well, how do you know what kind of vibe to set off for a party or an event? That's a good question, bro. That's a good question. Um... The first thing I would say is, like, the location will tell you a lot. You know, um, I've DJed, you know, Newark Patterson all the way down, you know, to, like, you know, the Jersey Shore, you know, doing tiki bars and beach clubs and stuff like that. That's the biggest thing. You know, if you're going to Newark, what kind of music can you expect that they're going to want to hear? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then if you go to, like, a family beach club, what kind of music are they going to want to hear? You know, so it's yeah. kind of like that's the biggest thing. And then... um Obviously, you know, like if somebody already has a house party and is bringing me on, usually I'll go by their guidelines on music, you know, hip hop, rap, Jersey Club is big, obviously, right now in Jersey. Yeah. So that type of music generally. But if I'm doing other types of events, it's really, you know, up to whoever's hosting it and, you know, whoever's paying me to be there. Yeah. You say Jersey Club's on the scene right now. How do you think it's been growing big? You know, it's like little, little while back, it was all, you know, Oh, Jersey Club's not this, Jersey Club's not that. Then, you know, yeah. um, Uzi dropped the uh, Just Wanna Rock, and that really bursted onto the scene with the Jersey Club. How do you expect Jersey Club to be in the next few years with its rapid growth and you being a part of it with all the mixes that you're doing with um, DJ? Um, I think the biggest thing for Jersey Club right now, honestly, I feel like a lot of, um, a lot of the drill rap, you know, in New York and other areas, I wouldn't say it stem from Jersey Club, but I feel like a lot of people listen to drill music with that, you know, that bass and the bass line and the beat and consider it Jersey Club. You know, like a lot of the, again, like a lot of the drill music is kind of what I guess people, even people in Jersey who don't really understand music would consider that Jersey Club when it's really drill music. And the same for like, you know, Bam Man Rose is a perfect example. Like he has music that you listen to and you're all right, this is Jersey Club. And then you have music, that's just regular rap music. So a lot of people, you know, I feel like they get it confused. Yeah. But at the same time, you know, people will tell me to play, oh, play Jersey Club, play Jersey Club, and then give me a song by Shot E.K. That's a drill song. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, yeah, if that's your idea of Jersey Club, that's fine, you know. But um, I wouldn't say the Jersey Club community in Jersey is really dying out. Obviously, a lot of people do still listen to it. Um, I just feel like there's not a lot of big Jersey Club artists from New Jersey right now that are putting the music out there i feel like it's more new york yeah how do you feel uh what do you think uh jersey artists can do like if a jersey artist is watching this what do you think they can do to improve the jersey club scene and make it into more of a mainstream thing sort of like the new york drill 
I mean, I'm not going to lie. If you look at the artists that have blown up from New Jersey, there's like a handful, you know. Mm-hmm. On the top of the my head, I would say Fetty Wap, Bam Man Real. That's that's really the only two. I'm not, I'm not I want to say now, like I'm not trying to not recognize people, but those are the two artists that come to my mind when you think about Jersey artists that have gone mainstream. Yeah. Um, I just feel like it's a really tough state to compete with, you know, all the other sources of music out there you know i feel like as an artist from new jersey there's not really a lot of love in new jersey you feel me not really it's a small circle people support each other but i mean i don't really know i i I can't really talk about that because i'm not really you know in that side of the entertainment industry you also have also too um new york's right there and you have philly too so you have to compete also with the philly artists and the new york artists that are more mainstream exactly where you have you know meek and 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 philly you have you know uh, Shy K, all these other rappers yeah, from New York, look, look even Jay Z, all look, like the big name artists yeah, come from exactly. these two big cities, and then you just have Jersey right in the middle of it, where it's harder for Jersey artists to come about, and it's hard to distinguish: Are you from Jersey? Because there are people that are, that are from Jersey that are coming from Philly, coming from yep. New York, that'll mm-hmm. still rep that set and not even mention Jersey whatsoever. Because you have these people that are from the Bronx moving into Newark, you have people from uh, Philly, Definitely. Broad yeah, Street, yeah. all them places moving into you mm-hmm. know Camden, and they're gonna say the biggest city that people know. No one's going to really know Camden or Newark right off the bat, but they're going to know New York City. They're going to know Philadelphia right away. So that's what they're doing. It's more of a regional thing. Yeah, and I people... feel like with the Jersey scene, they're not separating themselves from the bunch. They're just trying to fit yep. in with mm-hmm. New York and with Philly because it's just an easier way to get out there in the industry. I feel like a lot of people don't even want to claim their state. You know, like a lot of people from New Jersey don't claim New Jersey, you know? Yeah, it's, it's um, sad because Jersey's a... A lot of people come from Jersey. A lot of these artists that you see, they're from Jersey, but they won't say they're from Jersey. They'll exactly. Say they're there's from a, all these other places. I know there's a lot of really good underground artists that I listen to right now, and you know they all got under hundred thousand followers. I'm not saying that's not an accomplishment, but mm-hmm. for them to go mainstream, it doesn't really happen. You know, like if you, if you think about it, in the last I don't know, have maybe ten years, again, like there's only maybe one or two artists. You know, I, I would say Fetty Wap and Coyle Ray are the only two that I know that really blew up out of New Jersey. Mm-hmm. And then you got a bunch of drill rappers in New York who are blowing up. You got OT7 Kwani, who's from Philly, who just blew up, you know, and it's like the circle of the tri-state area, which is, you know, New York, New Jersey, Philly, PA. It's not really, it's not really a lot of people coming out of Jersey, you know. It really isn't. And uh, talking about New Jersey, where's your favorite location to DJ at in New Jersey? Um... The shore, the Jersey Shore. Jersey I love it down here. The best, yeah, I just yeah. moved down here from up north. I used to, I grew up in Morristown, so yeah. I moved down here about a year ago, and I, I really haven't left it since. You know, yeah. I don't really even go up north anymore. I don't yeah. go to New York City either, so definitely the shore. It's a whole different environment. You know, you know, you, they always talk about North Jersey, Central Jersey. Yes, there is a Central Jersey. Yeah, and <laughs> South Jersey. In South Jersey, definitely. Bro. Uh, it, it's a different vibe when you mm-hmm. when you come from north to south. Even cent- Centrals, you have that sort of mix of the two yeah. but when you go into South Jersey it's a whole nother world down there yep. compared to you know North Jersey when you have Newark and then when you have Philly Camden area it, it's just so different compared to the two and it's yep. you you see the way people uh, talk people communicate people mm-hmm. you know represent themselves it's totally a different environment yep. and uh, talking about Jersey I see you uh, on your page you go on different places across the country Worldwide at this point, where's your favorite place to be worldwide? Miami. Miami's always hundred percent Miami, hands down. You know, I've DJed a lot of places. I just did a whole tour last year with uh, one of my other friends that DJs. We did a whole tour. We hit Jersey, Philly, North Carolina, South Carolina, Washington, DC, Delaware, Atlanta, and then Florida. And for Florida was that was one of the first times I went to Miami. But um, definitely when I got down there. Like the the Georgia Florida region, definitely I love it down there. The nightlife is just, you know, people will be like, oh, I I rather go to New York City. I rather go to New York City. I'm not dissing New York City, but people will tell me I rather go to New York City than Miami, and I'm like, you rather go to somewhere that you know there's garbage and trash all over the ground and a bunch of homeless people everywhere. Yeah, the clubs in New York are great. They're lit, but you can go to Florida with palm trees and the beaches right there, and go to a club that's ten times better. You know. And, but, you know, um, being from and being from, you know, Morristown, being from that area, New York area, and you're saying all the there's all trash, there's homeless people. Mm-hmm. What do you think New York City can do to improve to where it can be like a Miami, where it can be a spot where everyone wants to go to? Because 
everyone's moving down south. You see all these people, these even these old heads that are like, yep. I want to move. I want to get out of New York. I want to get out of Jersey. I want to move down south to Florida because Florida is where it's at right now. Yeah. Not even just for parties and stuff, just for a regular life. How do you think New York can improve and become better and get to where it once was, being the mecca of the world? I mean, honestly, like, if you think about it, you know, the Hudson River is one of the biggest things that's been, you know, being talked about for a while. You know, you go to Miami, you can walk out of a club in Miami Beach and walk 10 feet and go to the beach, you know, or be on the beach in crystal clear blue water. And, you know, you walk out of a club in New York and you look at the Hudson River and, you know, you can smell it before you even get there. Oh, yeah. You know, again, like, I'm not dissing New York. I feel like definitely um, there's definitely, I mean, I mean, I've been hearing in the news about, like, the housing crisis, how, you know, you can't even buy, you can't even buy a, an apartment in New York and rent it out as an Airbnb now. Yeah. because there's such a you know a housing shortage out there um i mean i don't really know how the government works but i mean i don't know I, i'm i'm just gonna say miami's better you know what i'm saying if new york can improve yeah. that's that's fine i just you know i'm more of like a tropical guy you yeah know? and what uh what's your favorite thing about miami um because i'm go- i'm going in two weeks i'm gonna yeah, be there yeah. for spring break what, what's, what's your favorite thing that, that sets miami from everywhere else <sighs> I mean, in my experience, just, like, the environment, honestly, you know, like, Lamborghinis, Ferraris, Bentleys everywhere, beautiful girls everywhere, you know, I've never, I mean, I've been to Miami a bunch of times um, in the last year or two, and I've never had a bad experience down there, you know, I've never, like, felt like I had to, you know, look over my shoulder or, you know, felt like I was going to get into trouble or anything like that, you know. It's just very, you know, everybody kind of does their own thing. Yeah. You know, people aren't nosy. Like, New York, you, you're walking down the street. You don't know who's going to be there. You got exactly, people. yeah. You go to Times Square, yeah. and it's like you got, like, 15,000 different groups of people just sitting on the corner looking at you walking by. You Miami, know what's like, happen. You gotta watch Miami, you're at the bottom. Like, I'm not going to yeah. lie. I go to Miami. I'm, a, I'm at the bottom of the food chain, you know? Yeah. There's about 16 people with $300 million in their bank account every time I walk past them. You know, I'm not looking at them. They're not looking at me. Yeah. I'm down there, you know, go rent some jet skis and enjoy my time, yeah, you know. Everyone's just doing their own bu- yep. mind their own business there and mm-hmm. you know, even me with New York. Like I used to go to New York when I was a kid. Yep. It was perfect. It was a beautiful place. I used to mm-hmm. go there when I was a kid. And I guess when really like when like I want to say De Blasio got into being the mayor, it it just yeah. turned into a shithole. It's just crimes up. Yep. Um they're letting people out. They're letting all these things. I just saw on the news too. They let all, out all these people that were committing all these crazy crimes and they're right back yeah. on the street the next day and you got to watch over your soldier. You can't go out. You can't have a good time in New York, especially if you're a tourist because mm-hmm. that's who they're going to target first. If you look like a tourist and you you present yourself as a tourist, you're literally automatically going to be a target because they're going to That's gonna, funny. That's funny you that. say that. So same with the police. There's the police in New York are corrupt, yeah. bro. The government in New York is corrupt. It really is. The prison system is horrible. It's it, Rikers Island is one of the like, you know, I've the DA's, I've been the DA's locked, a nut. I've been yeah, locked up two crazy. times, yeah. bro, and I was in Essex County, and there's a lot of guys from New York mm-hmm. who are, like, telling me that, you know, Essex County is the worst jail in New Jersey, minus, like, Jamesburg, and they're telling me, like, yeah. Rikers Island is, like, Jamesburg on steroids, bro. Yeah. Like, the prisoners run that place. You know, mm-hmm. there's, like, the guard to prisoner ratio is ridiculous, but it's very f- funny thing you said that. I was in the subway, actually. And I was watching people hop the subway thing, right? Yeah. Just jumping right, right, right over in front that. of the cops, you know. So much money in the cops. And I was like, nothing. I walked up and I was, I was talking to my friend about something involving like, I, I don't remember what it was, that how I wasn't from New York, and um, this girl that I was with, like, snuck, I paid for the metro and she squeezed in behind me, and you know who they gave a ticket? They gave me a ticket. Yeah. Meanwhile, there's like, I'm watching people as the cop stops me to give me a ticket. There's people jumping the thing right in front yeah. of them. And they stopped me and gave me a ticket. Yeah, it's it's very corrupt. I mean, and NYPD is just, they won't do nothing. They won't do anything. They'll be like, oh, there's a murder. Big deal. Move on. I mean, there's, you see the video. This. You see the videos that, you know, drill rappers post of the cops pulling up in vans yeah. and, and hopping out and walking right up to you and pushing you up against a wall and putting yeah. their hands but without in any, your pockets. Anything, yeah. With, with no reason, you know. It, it's it's a madhouse in New York. And yeah. I don't, and, and I always say this, I will always love New York, but it's just, you can't go there no more. It, it's, nope. it's very corrupt. The, the government there is corrupt. You have mm-hmm. um all like the officials and stuff, all the, the DA, he's, yep. he's a nut too. And, and you know what they're doing? Instead of focusing on, and I'm not trying to get political, but instead of focusing on building up the, the city, trying to go back, they're putting all that money into trying to get Trump out of office yeah. and, and all this stuff. That, that's what they yep. focus on more. And it, it's like you you elect your officials and it's very uh, it's very biased when it comes to New York because mm-hmm. of all the, the stuff. But 
they they focus on their things to try to make themselves happy. They don't yeah. focus on the people. And when you get to Miami, it's a it's a whole different environment. Yeah. It's a whole it's a whole different political system there too. You you notice the differences. You see the economic system there. It's booming. You see all the people there. They're happy. There's not as many homeless people. There's not yeah. as many crimes going on because of the safe things that they do. As much as I hate saying police is you know good, but the police there at least they're managing the this crime and the situations there correctly whereas yeah. in new york it's all corrupt there's all racism it's all crazy stuff going on there and it's, it's yeah, just I mean, a mess don't get me wrong like every big city is obviously there's going to be crime there's going to be like miami is an example you know yeah. miami and miami beach are beautiful then you go to buy like hard rock state in miami gardens and it's a, it's a shithole there's yeah. bars on the windows you know like but you know even when i went to rolling loud i drove through there three days in a row at you know two o'clock in the morning and i had no problems with anybody there wasn't you know shootings going on people fighting there was none of that but everybody was you know doing their like i said before doing their own thing you know mind their business with your family whatever bro but new york i feel like i don't know like, like i said i'm not this new york at all it's just yeah, it's not not a place i like you know it's not 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 what it used to be and uh you know like i'll go up to westchester county which is right you know yeah not too far from the city i love that area upstate new york i'll go there any day of the week but Beautiful. new york city you know i'm not going to the bronx i'm not going to brooklyn I'm not, even Manhattan, I stay out of Manhattan. Yeah. I just don't like being around there, you know. Yeah. I only go when I have to go. I don't exactly. Know. It's, it's, yep. You have to go like because when I, I just was at a basketball game, we, me and Smooth, we just went to a Knicks game together. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's the only time I went. I don't like to go just to go. I have to mm-hmm. go when I'm when I'm necessarily having to go. It's it's just terrible. The trains are bad. Yeah. Uh, all the different things. It, people are getting killed and they're just leaving them there. It's like no big deal, and they're not reporting it. They're reporting all the stuff that's you know convenient to the media because the mainstream media wants you to think about these other things that are not really important exactly when the yep. real issues are going on and it's it, it's just a corrupt city and i i just don't like the way new york has been lately you know it's that's that's how it, is it, it really bro. is and my girl all the time let's go to the city let's go to the city I'm like for what you like, let's walk around I'm like walk around and do what watch people shit in the middle of the road, <laughs> yeah, you like know? like you know but you know only time i ever go there is if i do an event up there or you know if i'm a wreck yeah. banger he goes there a lot he goes to manhattan beach uh, studio so i'm yeah. there all the time but other than that like all the kids are they just want to go to new york and walk around times square and that's just something i'm not going to get behind you know it's just nothing it's same old crap and times square used to be a beautiful place now yep. it's 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 all like construction and it's all mm-hmm. crime and it's all terrible it's not yep. what it used to be not at all and uh speaking of wreck banger I, I see you have a really close relationship with wreck going back to when he first started onto the scene mm-hmm. what's your relationship like with wreck uh, me and him are really close. Um, you know, that's my guy. I bring He comes out to my parties and performs. He brings me to his events. Um, he stayed with me for a little bit this summer. You know, I brought him to my girls' beach club. Um, but that's my guy, you know. We have a relationship, you know, when it comes to the industry, doing stuff like that. But we also got, you know, we're homies. We're, we're real cool outside of all that stuff. Yeah, and that's what builds up the, the trust, it, what builds mm-hmm. up relationships because if you just yeah. do business it's just going to be business but when you build an actual personal relationship with the yep. person you're going to care about them more you're going to do more for them and that's what's going to help you grow stronger not only as a friendship but in a business standpoint because you're going to go to hell and back for that person yep. Most they're definitely, going to go to hell and back for you and that's going to make you improve and make you go stronger look at me and smooth we we literally we were you know we were friends in high school we're on the same basketball yeah. team this and that we started doing business together but then you know this past summer we used to do all these different events and we got mm-hmm. closer to yeah, yeah. more personal stuff and that's what helped us grow and we're, we're a team now so it's all about having a team in place and being with your people what do you think about when you have your team you have kyle over here you have rec you got all these other people what is it like representing your your team and making it out with all your peoples i mean not gonna lie you know i used to have like a you know a team of elites bro you know i used to work with a big dj and um one of the biggest party promoters in New Jersey who had over 50,000 subscribers on Snap. And if you told this kid, yo, post this flyer, it was going to be a house. It was going to be Project X, you know. Yeah. And I was working very closely with the both of them. And we had all these plans and we were doing events and parties and everything. And, you know, everything fell apart, you know. Like anybody who is really tapped in with me on social media knows, like, I haven't been doing house parties and events like I used to, you know, like when COVID was like in the middle of COVID when the lockdown first started, like opening back up again. That's when everyone. Dude, I was, outside. I was, yeah, yeah, everybody was outside. We, we was I was. All doing that. We all wanted to get out of the house. We were exactly. Like, you know we were all locked down for so long. We said, you know what? 
Let's go out and party. We don't care where the hell we are. We just want to get out the house. Exactly. You were locked out. That was my time where I like I really blew. Yeah, so you much know, fun. We, we were all doing stuff together. Yeah, it, was, it was just a great time. That's when I started to really get recognized because it was like I was really, you know, the only DJ that was doing everything. You know, I was throwing parties in Patterson, Newark, Bergen County, Morris County, Sussex County, at the shore, on the beach. Yeah, I was doing go, shit we would everywhere. We go from one party, then the cops would shut it down, and then. We were finding a place up north. We were driving an hour just to yeah. go to the next party. And then We'd the all next go party together. would be a banger, bro. And everyone, and you know what it was? When one person went, everyone else went. People exactly. were jumping in people's cars. We didn't even know the people. Yeah. They were just jumping in cars. We were like, yeah. yo, this, this is the next spot. Let's next go. Spot, Let's go. Out. And, yeah. and you've made, and people have made so many friends there over the years. Definitely, We've all made bro. connections like me and you. Like, we, we started getting in tap together. You know, it was, we were, you know, we stay friends. We, we stay mm-hmm. close to each other. No homo, but like we, we stayed close to each other for so long, and it's like we family now when it Definitely, comes to this bro. stuff because of everyone being outside, everyone just want to have a good time. And that, that's the thing when people try to have beef and stuff, it's like who cares about that shit? Like trying to have a good time that's what the, it's all about at the end of the day, and it, it's crazy, you know? Yeah, like COVID was definitely, um, it was a period of depression for a lot of people, but once, like you said, like everybody stopped giving a fuck, you know, like yeah. The amount of fines I got from different police departments for oh, yeah. breaking the, uh, like, the... The COVID laws. The COVID laws, yeah, literally, like, $1,000 yeah. fines, like, every party, and I was yeah. like, all right, look, I'm making... We got this big party in Howell. It was, uh, I think it was... Dur- it was still during COVID, but the, uh, we knew the guy, he, uh, homeowner, he got arrested because yep. you weren't allowed to have a, a large group of people. We ended up, you know what we did? We had a, a few of our close friends, we just said, fuck it, we all went upstate, had all the people, we, had, we, we have a lake house upstate New York, Yeah, yeah. and all of us, we had a big-ass party upstate because... There was no cops around, so we all yeah. just had that. We all just had woods, a big you know? party. It was like, you know what? Screw it. All, all, and I'm not trying to get into all political with COVID, this and that, but we just wanted to be out. Like, whatever happens, Dude, happens. it was like two years of, like, wearing masks everywhere, and every at one point, everything was shut down. You couldn't even fucking go into a restaurant yeah. and get food, you know? And once all, like, I started throwing all these parties, and everybody was coming because, you know, people were tired of being inside, and then this last sum- past summer, you know, like, once COVID lockdown completely lifted, everybody... Died down. It died down, you know. Because everyone went back everybody, to their lives. Yeah, everybody got their fucking like fix of like holy shit, adrenaline party, let's drink, let's do this, that, that, whatever. And now everybody's, you know, at school and college going back yeah. to whatever, you know. That's yeah. the one thing I like about back to Miami. Mm-hmm. Spring break Miami is like six weeks long. And everyone's and down everybody's there. Everybody's down there. And they're all there. down there for one reason. It's just like it's like everything that happened with COVID, everyone's down there. Yeah. That I'm that's what that's there, what yeah, reminds me of uh not reminds me of COVID, but that's why I like going down there. I'll go down I usually go down there like March to like beginning of April because like yeah. the, the Florida spring break well not the spring break but like all the colleges have different spring breaks so like everybody's yeah. down there for that consistent like month and a half mm-hmm. and like you'll go to like Fort Lauderdale bro the clubs down there are like, oh, like insane. Yeah. You, you walk out of your Airbnb or your apartment wherever you're staying you go down to the, the main strip where all like you know EBs and all the clubs are and it's like whole street is filled with people bro mm-hmm. you know everybody has their shirts off girls bikinis just all day long bro <laughs> yeah, it's, so it's like fun. it's lit bro yeah but, what do you and what do you think going back to saying that the party scene's dying down what do you feel, not not just the DJs, promoters, mm-hmm. what do you think the, the people, the fans, the people that want to come to these parties can do to improve it, to make these parties more fun, make these parties more engaged, have a bigger crowd, more like a Project X type thing that we had two years ago? I just feel like a lot of people just don't really, obviously people still want to party, but um, not as many people really come outside. I wouldn't say come outside, but really go out, you know, go out every weekend. Um, but the biggest thing is, you know, you can have a party full of a thousand people and it could be lit, but if one person fucks up, they fuck it up for everybody. You yeah, know? exactly. Like March third, the uh, the party in um Howell. Yeah, yeah. That party, like we would have hit max capacity. That's a like a twelve hundred person venue. Yeah. And some kids broke the window because we had security in the front. We had we yeah. had they had their liquor licenses, they had their permits, they had their sound ordinance. They had, the venue had everything we needed. We had security, we had everything, bro. And one fucking kid decided to sneak a liquor bottle in. And when the cops showed up, we were like, you know, no one's drinking. Because we, we really thought no one had liquor yeah. in there, you know? Like, I'm not going to lie. We had, we had, we had the, the dogs and all that. Yeah. yeah so, you know, the cops walked through, and they in the back of the venue, there's, like, a bunch of kids fucking with bottles. And they're like, all right, shut it down. If those kids didn't sneak the fucking liquor in like we told them in the beginning, you can't bring drinks in here. Like, if you want to drink, go into your car. Or, you know, walk, take a walk, go somewhere else. Yeah, because there's a whole You know, you can't there, drink yeah. here. You can't drink on the property. But you can go drink wherever you want. You know, it's mm-hmm. up to you. That's your discretion. But once you come on this property of the venue, you can't drink. And they're like, oh, yeah, whatever. Everybody thinks, so, you know, hey, whatever. Oh, we're going to fuck this guy, you know. And then you fuck the party up for everybody, bro. Yeah, exactly. Everybody. One person can mess it up for a thousand people, you know. It, it's sad, you and know. And that's the biggest thing. People don't care. 
Yeah, they They'll don't. be that one kid who, oh, I just want to drink. I don't care. I just want to drink. I want to have fun. And you mess it up for everybody else. Now everybody else has to go home at, you know, 9.30. I was, I was pissed off because I was about to perform because yep. I was about to perform. I was I was practicing all week. I had my whole set ready. I was mm-hmm. like, let's go. I made I even made a new song just for the party. And I was like, yeah. let's get it going. And I was about to go up there perform. And next thing you know, I see, it, it, I think it was me and you were up front. And all I see is a cop, somebody pushing out all the, uh, the, the wires and shit. And I'm thinking it's just some random kid. I look, there's a cop. And I'm like, yeah. I'm like, and I have the mic in my hand, and I go, fuck you, bitch. And I didn't give a fuck it was a cop. I was so pissed off, because you know what it was? Yeah. We worked so hard to get that position to do that. I had mad people that I knew that came for me yeah. to see me perform. People were coming up before, like, yo, Eddie, we're so hyped to see you perform. You know, first big performance, you know, back outside since, you know, all this shit happened with me. And they were like, yo, l- l- let's get it popping. And I'm like, yeah, let's do it. Represent yeah. the other artists, too. We had Drew there. We had all these other people there, too. And... We were we were all ready to go and got one person decided to fuck it up and I remember I was cursing up the cop I'm like fuck you but like you 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 can't do this and then of course at the end of the day once you understand the reason why it, it makes sense but in the moment you're just really pissed off because yeah, I mean I'm not all like, that hard work is just... I never get mad at the police for shutting it down because it's not like they just shut it down it, the thing about house parties in New Jersey is you can have a party bro yeah but if there's underage drinking going on it's gonna get shut do down. It. Every single time, exactly. if a fight breaks out, it's gonna get shut down every single time. Yeah. That's a problem. You have a bunch of bunch of fucking human beings yeah. in a little basement or a venue acting like animals. Yeah. At, at least, like, like I said, one person. All it takes is one person, bro. Yeah, exactly. and that was the problem. With all the house parties I was doing in 2022 is like fucking crazy fights would break out and it would get taken outside, and then the neighbors are calling the cops. You know, yeah. now you're committing, you never know what they have. You you're committing an act of violence. Yeah. You know, in somebody's neighborhood and rent an Airbnb or if somebody let us use their crib. And then now the cops are showing up, and, you know, they see some kid all beaten up. Yeah. Party shut down. Cops come in. There's people drinking. Party shut down. If none of that were to happen, the cops would show up, look through, and we're good till, you know, 11, 12 o'clock, whatever, whatever Perfect, the sound yeah. ordinance is in that town, yeah. you know. But, like I said, it's always that one person. Bro. It is, yeah. I've dealt with it myself at the parties, dealt with people doing shit with me. I'm just like, you know what? I know what's right. I know what's wrong. I know, like, a lot of situations I'm smarter than I look. So when it comes yeah. to all these things, it's like, Okay, this is what you got to do mm-hmm. to maintain it. This is what you got to do to have all this shit pop in. And it's it's just so many people that are just immature nowadays because it's, yep. you know, you go out here and it's, um, you got all these kids. And what are they trying to do? Just to get a 10-second fucking clip on Snap? Literally, cool. bro. Try, try, to get Literally. A bitch, try to get a bitch that they're not even going to be with in the next week. Try yep. to impress somebody one night and ruin mm-hmm. it for everyone else that ruin put it. their hard work in. Like, all the promoters, all the people yeah. setting up the party. This not all the people have to clean up. All the people that have to deal with the consequence because of their actions because it's not them that are going to get in trouble. It's going to be the, the homeowners, the the people that were running the party that are going to get in trouble. So the, and the money involved, so, too. So just look at the uh, the people at, uh, what was it, uh, Pure Village two years ago. They all got they all got charged and shit because of other people acting up at the at the. Pure it's crazy thing. you bring that up. I had, I had nothing to do with that, bro. Nothing to do with that Pure, Pure Village stuff. And the detectives were calling me. Just they were calling me, too. Just because I had a name. Yeah. Calling they were calling me, they're like, do you know anything about this? I remember I was in Canada. I was yeah. walking around. It was, uh, I was in Bayshore. It was, a, it's a big uh, mall in, in, in Ottawa, Canada. We were, I was there and I got a call from a detective and they're like, they're from a, a Long Branch detective yep. office. And they were yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah, they were like, oh, like, were you uh part of this thing? I'm like, no, like, and they're like, well, we saw that you were posting that you were there about it. Cause you, they're like, they did because me, of course, you know, when you have 250,000 views on Snapchat, somebody's going to squeal and try to get you in trouble. Of course, yeah, yeah. you know, and, and it's like. Oh, were you part of it? Were you this that? I'm like, no. Like I showed up because I'm I'm trying to you know represent for all people that were there. I knew mm-hmm. people that were hosting and I knew people that were running and I knew people that were there and they all wanted me to come outside and it's like yeah I'm gonna come outside I'm gonna support people. Yep. It's not that I'm running it. It's just I'm supporting them and and they're like who was it? I'm like I don't know. I said it's that uh world it's that world uh wide connection lag and I hung up. I said I'm done. Like, I said, I, like the I thing about it. me was like when I was when I was working with Jersey parties and he went after the party right and i posted videos of all like the tear gas canisters yeah i was, I was, there. I was in the middle of it and he i don't know if he like tried to say that i was the owner of the account or what but the detective calls me and he's like oh that like like pressing me over the phone like yeah, i know you were posting stuff I, we have screenshots we have yeah, proof that your name was on your name was on it. i'm like i know you're lying to me because the because i know for a fact name my name didn't have my name my, on it exactly either. i had no connections and i literally my mom had told me like like the day or two before she's like you're not going to long branch yeah. you're not going to long branch and i'm like i, I don't even want to go yeah like i don't want to go it was, there it was insane i remember the, the the day i went my tire popped on the way there i had to go to my boys at a at um 
this uh the uh mechanic mm-hmm. they had to put my spare on i went i was supposed to pick i was supposed to pick up nuke shout out nuke uh yeah, Nuke's and a he boy. ended up and, and uh he ended up getting a ride there and there's all tear gas all this shit going on after i yeah. left because it was me and all the guys from the group chat we were all there and uh I, I stayed late and then next thing you know it was oh there were there was the, all the tear gas and of course i ain't gonna i'm not trying to be like crazy enough I'm, I'm like the only white kid there. So it's like, <laughs> you know, I'm an easy target, not just for people to like go after me, but like the cops too, because they're going to yeah. look at me and go, oh, he's white. He probably is one of the promoters because, you mm-hmm. know, the cops are racist. They're going to think, oh, the white guy there is probably the one in, in power and all that. And it's, it's, they're going to, they're going to look at me different and then they're going to try to question me, press me, especially when I had the tech call me. I'm like, first off, how you get my number? Yeah, Second yeah, off, exactly. how you get my actual legal government information? And it's like I'm in the crossfire of all this other shit going on, and it, it, it's it's ridiculous. And I'm like, my name wasn't on the flyer. I may have posted pull up. I may have posted, you know, yo, I'm I'm here, like you know, like who who's here, you know, yeah, and posting all it. the all the things. But that's not me saying, yo, pull up here. I'm not organizing an event. And then they were like, yeah, like that that okay, that's valid. But like, who was doing it? And that's when I hung up. I'm like, yeah, I ain't snitching. So, yeah, they tried to tell me that um, they had like my name was in the Jersey party, so like they gave me my name my birthday and it wasn't even a jersey party they gave party. me my phone number and the detective slipped up because in snap you can't even put your address in you, you can't it's not no. required and he reads off my old address that i used to live at years ago and i'm like you're lying to me you're trying to get me to admit something i didn't do because you can't even put your snapchat in your and like when you sign up for a snap account it's name phone number email and um your birthday yeah exactly. and i was like no, you're lying no to me i go on my phone i'm looking at my settings on my phone i'm like you're lying to me for one i don't even have access to that account and even if i did and you were trying to you know gaslight me into admitting mm-hmm. you know or, or getting me to self snitch on myself you can't even put your address in your snap and mm-hmm. i told them have a nice day and i hung up on them bro and yeah, they exactly. never they never contacted me they, since. Never, they didn't even contact me you know, back again they were trying then, to get me to give them information yeah. that first of all i didn't even have i i again to this day i'm gonna defend my innocence bro I had zero connections to anybody who put that together bro me neither that was all I, I, knew, I knew i knew like one or two of the people that that ran it but I didn't have any connection of me wanting to go and post it and all that. And, yeah. that, and, that, and that's the thing. Like, and, and, and what do you think about the cops and, and the party scene? Like, like full on. Like, I know we were just talking about the cops and all that. But what's your honest opinion on cops and parties and what they what they do to parties? Whether it's shutting it down, you know, all that other crap. Like, I mean, yeah, like think? we kind of talked about it a little bit before. I think yeah. if there's a valid reason for them to shut it down, which is 99% of the time, you know, again, like underage drinking whatever, you know, fight, stuff like that. It's valid, but it's the cops that pull up and are dickheads about it, you know. Yeah, so it was those dickheads. They come and start yelling, and, like, I was in Paramus. I, I did a party in Paramus, and um, the cops showed up, and I, I was DJing, so I turned the music off, and I went upstairs to count my money that I just got paid. And the cops come knocking door to door, and I'm, like, in the bathroom just chilling, bro. And I'm, like, I don't even want to talk to this guy right now. So I'm, like, acting like I'm taking a shit. I'm silent, whatever. The cops go downstairs, and then I walk downstairs like five minutes later, and they all like surround me and walk up to me. Where were you? We just checked every room upstairs. I'm like, okay. I was taking a shit in the bathroom. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, so so what are you doing here, huh? And I'm like, I'm the DJ. I got paid to be here. I got contracted to be here. He's like, okay, you have to get all your stuff and leave. And I'm like, that's that's what I'm doing. He's like, you being smart with me? I'm like, no. We're having a normal conversation, man to man. He's like, getting all in my face, big big like six five white cop, bro, jacked. And I'm like, I'm like. What, what are you doing, bro? Exactly. I'm like, you came here and shut it down. I'm going downstairs to get my stuff, and I'm going to be on my way. Bro, you're being rude and disrespectful. Da, 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 da. We have a warrant to be here. God damn. I'm like, okay, that has nothing to do with me, bro. Nothing to do with me. You, like, I, you're mad because some kid probably spit in your face. Go take it out on him. Exactly. Don't come up to me because I was upstairs and shitting in the bathroom. I wasn't about to open the door for you, you know? Exactly. Like, that dude probably that cop probably didn't get invited to parties when he was a kid, so he's I mean, probably going to take it out on, on, on all these other people that got invited. That's how it goes. Exactly. So going back to you DJing and all that, what's your go-to music? Oh, I mean, my favorite music is Jersey Club, and I'm a big, like, EDM house yeah. bass music guy. Favorite artist, EDM artist? EDM artist, probably James Hype. He's fire, bro. He makes yeah. crazy remixes. Yeah. What about uh, Jersey Club? Um, For, like, Jersey Club beats, probably MC Vert. Shout out yeah. to MC. He's from Newark. Yeah. He's should have won that Grammy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. MC Vert, definitely number one. Kilo South, I fuck with. My boy DJ Express, shout out Express. Mm. Um, Artist-wise, definitely Band Man. I'm definitely going to support Jersey. I love Band yeah. Man. Love his music. Yeah, exactly. Um, next question, bro. How'd you come up with your name? 
MTP Murphy. How'd you come up with it? Um, this was a girl I was fucking with way back when I first started DJing. And I just went by like Mur I forget I was like Murphy or something. And she was like, we were just talking one day. She's like, you should change your name. And I'm like, to what? And we were talking about it and she's like well, like, you do music, and, like, you always have, like, a cameraman with you, so it's, like, you're kind of, like, you're, you have your own TV show, so I'm, like, thinking about it, I'm, like, music and TV, I was, like, MTV, they do music and TV, yeah. so I put it together, I was, like, this is fire, and that's how it came from, you know, just, it was a simple conversation, and I was, like, damn, that's fire. Yeah, that's, that's tough, man, I never, I never would have thought that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, uh, going back to all the parties, all the things that you've done, what's the most amount of people that have ever come to your event? I want to say somewhere in the ballpark of like biggest, maybe like twenty five hundred. That's crazy. Two two thousand twenty five hundred about. That was an event I did with um some people in Westchester, New York. Mm-hmm. Massive venue, bro. It was huge. It was one of the biggest venues I've ever seen. I would say probably like two two k maybe. That's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. And uh, going back to having a lot of people showing up, that's a great experience. What is your greatest experience, DJing? Oh man, I can't even say this on. I can't even say this on the here. I can't, bro. Uh, second, <laughs> second. Um, just like I mean, when you're DJing, bro, you you really honestly have. To, if you're a good DJ, you have full control over what how the environment and you know the energy in the party is. And I just like you know, when I walk in there and I start drinking, and then everybody starts coming and they're drinking, and like we kind of like match up our levels of fucked up yeah. and it's like whenever anytime i dj i've been dj for four or five years Every, anytime i dj no matter how many people it is i always get nervous bro and i'll be sitting there and i'm like mixing i'm kind of like i wouldn't say fucking up but i'm like not really doing too much i'm just doing really simple transitions and stuff like that and then once i start you know once that liquor gets involved and i'm looking out the crowd everybody's like oh it was all fucked up i'm like all right now i'm gonna turn it up bro and just like being able to like take the energy from zero to 100 and then like take it back down to 50 and then take it back to 100 with you know it's all it depends on what music you're playing you know yeah. like if i'm gonna like mix an edm with like jersey club which you're not really not supposed to do as a dj but i'll mix like edm or like you know some pitbull and stuff like that and like all the white girls start going crazy and then i'll like transition over a little bit of rap drill and then all everybody else starts going crazy yeah. and then, so you kind of like especially with new jersey you gotta you gotta balance it bro yeah. so you always have the drunk white girls coming up to you oh play this song play this artist and it's like all right i'm not gonna play Katy perry when i've been playing k flock for the last 30 minutes you know you can't transition it like that but it's just finding out the right dynamic of you know what music you're gonna play because i don't want to just play like straight jersey club drill i want to play shit that everybody you know enjoys yeah. and have everybody be able to hear the songs they like so yeah what was your favorite party you ever had probably march 3rd march 3rd definitely yeah, march 3rd that was yeah. Great, yeah that wasn't the biggest but it was definitely the most fun for me yeah Exactly, and uh, you know, you were talking about all these other DJs before you were collaborating with, working with your 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 team, Rack. You know, you got Kyle here. Mm-hmm. Like, talk about those guys and what they mean to you, and why you love working with them, why you love being around them. Um, I'm not gonna lie, everybody around me is just really supportive. You know, my girl, shout out my girl, she's definitely my number one supporter. I've been over here for almost a year now. Um, she's always the one pushing me. Like sometimes I'll, I'll turn down bookings and shows. So you know, what the fuck are you doing? Like get up and go out and do it. Like I'm not playing with you. Like get up and get your stuff and go. She'll start yelling at me. Like you know, go DJ Kyle. You know, he's the one that puts in the work behind the scenes for me. You know, he's always getting me bookings, trying to get me. You know, try new things. You know, like he was the one who set this up today for me. So, um, those are the number two. I mean, one and two. I don't really have anybody else in my circle that. Is really you know on my team i would say i don't really work with any other djs right now actually shout out brandino that's another kid i work with yeah um i've been trying to teach him the ropes you know he's Good not kid. too experienced yeah. but i've been definitely you know trying to teach him and he's been getting a lot better you know with his mixes and everything like that so those are definitely the you know the three people yeah exactly and uh where do you see yourself in five years um I want to continue DJing, you know, I want to make that my career, but I've been more on, like, the entrepreneur path right now the last, right. like, year or so. I've been um, working on a bunch of different brands and clothing lines, and, you know, I've been in drop shipping and Amazon sites and stuff like that, so. Let's talk about, like, the brands that you want to st- get going, your clothing brands, all that. Yeah, so what? my clothing brand, Apparel Avenue, is, like, a graphic clothing line. Um, 
have a car detailing business that I'm trying to get, you know, started up. And then I also have um, a pet food, organic pet food company that I've been working on with my girl's mom. So that's a big thing because, um, you know, I don't really want to go into too many details, but the dog food that's on the market right now is horrible for the dog's it health. It is, yeah. You know, it creates, you know, leads to cancer. It shortens our lifespan by, you know, 30%. There's a lot of the details that go into. I don't want to go into that right now, but um, those are definitely the top three. And then um, as I meet successful people down the road, I want to, um, you know, learn from them. want to learn about investing, you know, Bitcoin, crypto, all that stuff. You know, I want to make, I don't want to just make a million dollars. I want to make a billion, you know. I want to yeah. be on Forbes list, like, and then, you know, I could have all the money behind me. And then, look, I can drop five bands on a venue. I mm-hmm. can drop ten bands, like, you know, whatever, work with this promoter, this club, da 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 whatever, and use that to kind of boost my career. Yeah, exactly. Who's the uh, biggest person you ever met, like, most famous person you ever met? Um, Most famous, probably J.I. Oh, nice. J.I. Yeah. Prince of New York. I met him at the Westchester show. Mm-hmm. Um. I mean, I don't really know how to compare, like, famousness level. Yeah. I mean, I met a, a couple big, big, you know, mainstream rappers, but, um, yeah, probably him. You know? yeah, nice. Yeah. Where do you see yourself DJing at? Like, if you want to pursue the, the DJing stuff, too, like, if you sort of get big with it, where where do you want to see yourself DJing if it, if it grows? Definitely, like, Europe. I want to go to Europe, you know, because I like to, I, I, you know, my favorite music to play is, like, that EDM house stuff. Yeah. And that's really big over there. So I yeah. want to go to like Europe, Amsterdam, Ibiza, go to like those big, big clubs and, you know, do a one time show or something like that over there. Yeah. But, yeah. And uh, w- when it comes to DJing, you have different equipment. I know when we were at the shows, we have all the, the different equipment set up. Mm-hmm. What's your favorite type of equipment to use when it comes to DJing? Um, a lot of DJs, they'll, you know, get two tops, two speakers, and their mixer and a mic and call it a day. But, um, my boy Mario that I used to work with taught me a lot about like sound engineering and stuff like that. You know, um, the biggest thing for me is when I DJ, I have my subs. I bring subs. I have big, like huge 28 inch subs, mm-hmm. and it really makes a difference when you're just hearing the high range of the music. But when you have those subs on the floor and you know you can fucking feel the vibrations, yeah. it makes a big, big difference with the sound quality and everything yeah. of wherever you know it could be even be a birthday party, mm-hmm. kids' birthday party, you know. But having a full range of sound really is important when you want to have good sound quality but you want to have like a really full sounding you know full sounding music at a party you know? yeah, what kind yeah. of uh companies that you use for them you know because it's all about sound quality you could have the same subwoofers as somebody else but if it's a different brand it's not mm-hmm. going to sound as good what is, what's the I brands use, that you like to use? i use hardbringer subs yeah what about um, a, a dj like turntables all that what's your favorite? i have a uh serato or a pioneer ddj x a thousand nice my go-to it's like a perfect middle end Board's about like a thousand dollars. It's um four decks, so or four channels, I should say. Yeah, that's that's good. And then speaking of uh equipment, different brands. What kind of dolls you use? Um, I try to get into Pro Tools a little bit. I just didn't really have the time to figure it out. But um, I use Logic. Nice, yeah. It's pretty simple, so simple, yeah. simple to use. But yeah. you know, um, that's about it. I used yeah. to experiment with FL, but yeah. definitely Logic. And fucking yeah. I like the layout of everything it's all simple yeah. it's you use it for um for recording your own music or for <coughs> also uh mixing stuff for DJing I record it record my own music but um mixes I use it mixes I use a different software yeah, what kind of software is that um I forget the name no. but it's just like an audio recorder that plugs into Serato oh yeah, yeah, yeah. so yeah, so and uh talking about using logic and music um you want to be a music artist as well you know coming into um you just saying before, oh, I do uh, Logic for music. You want to be a music artist as well? I'm not going to lie. I kind of, you know, the music I make is just for fun. Yeah. I don't really take it seriously. You know, like some of my songs, people will listen to be like, yo, this is like actually really fire. And they'll be like, yo, take it more seriously. But um, I don't know. I just make music for me, to be honest. You yeah. know, like I'll release some tracks. I have a ton of stuff in the archive that I haven't even, you know, played for anybody. No one's even heard. But yeah. I just do it for me, you know. Yeah, what uh, what kind of style you use? Like, what subgenres you you rap? I don't even really know. Just whatever comes. I just like do it. most of my songs are like heartbreak. Not really heartbreak, but they're like yeah. more like Drew world type of music. Mm-hmm. Just like liquor, drugs, girls, money, you know, yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, this is my last few questions. Yeah, um, let me see. 
Yeah. What are some uh things in the works that are coming up? Like you and DJing, you and music, et cetera, business? Um, I'm trying to put a tour together. I definitely want to do something this summer. Um, I want to do like Midwest. So I did East Coast last year. I want to do like Midwest. Um, and then just, you know, focus on my business, not new, you know, make new opportunities, meet new people. Um, that's about it. Yeah. And what do you want to, what do you want your dream job to be? Who do you want to DJ for? Who's the one DJ, the one artist, DJ, whatever you want to, you want to work with? Um, probably D Savage. Nice. Fuck yeah. with D Savage. Yeah. I, yeah. I like his style of music. Yeah. And, uh, what do you want all the viewers to know about your legacy? What you put in the DJ scene? Um, what do you want them to know about you? I mean, honestly, you know, anybody can start from anywhere in your life. You know, you could become a businessman, you're a lawyer, doctor, DJ, rapper, anything. But if you don't put 100% of your time and effort into it, you know, it's not going to work out. You know, I could have sat there and DJ 50 person house parties, but, you know, I took the time to actually figure out how promotional marketing works. And, but time, every single time I do an event, I put, you know, days to weeks worth of, you know, time and effort into it and make sure everything's planned out according to, you know, how I want it to go and what, you know, laws we have to buy by, what town we're in, wherever. So, I mean, just put the effort in, you know. Yeah. You don't know if you're going to do well if you don't try, you know. Exactly. And uh, last question of the day, bro. What's your life message to everybody? Um, Just be positive, man. There's too much hate in this world, honestly, yeah. you know. There's too much hate. Yeah. There's too many people who are trying to be something they're not, you know. Everybody wants to... Every kid now wants to be fucking K-Flock and, you know, have a gun and go fight and jump people and stab people and, you know, sell drugs and stuff like that. But, I mean, like, a lot of these suburbs kids especially, bro, like, stay in your lane, you know. Exactly, man. With that being said, that's going to conclude this episode of Clutch Time Interview. My man, Antv Murphy, special guest today. Thank you for being a part Appreciate of this today. Appreciate you having me, brother. And, uh, yeah, stay tuned. Follow him on Instagram. Uh, stay tuned with him. Go to his events, best events you'll ever go to. He runs New Jersey when it comes to these parties. He's on the come up. He's going to be next up worldwide. So stay real with him. Stay in tune with him. And uh, I'll see y'all in the next interview. Clutch down.